So I already knew what time it was. When I went into that unit, there was this eerie feeling, and, and I'm a seasoned convict. You know, you know when a riot's going to pop off and you know when someone's going to get whacked. You know when someone's going to get whacked because everybody looks at them a certain way. It's like that look of like, oh shit, that guy's about to die. And like, you'll see like some like toothless pice be like, hey, um, excuse me, you owe me $4, um, you think I can get that? And you're like, what the fuck? I just... Borrowed that from you yesterday. I know, but, um, you know, they know that you're going to get whacked, so they'll come, like, collect their debts. Not saying that happened to me, but it's really watching the eyes. You know, the eyes, just how they collectively look at you like that. You know, I could see how it looked like I checked in. None of these guys knew me. I come in there. I'm a, I'm a straight dope fiend. Yeah, let me get that. Let me get that. I'm, I'm like shooting up and just I'm going hard doing some boxing like every day and um you know uh I and then all of a sudden I just get taken off the yard but the thing is is I had a lock I had a clean lockup order that should trump everything they don't doctor that shit they don't give a shit that alone should prove that I didn't secondly I'm coming back to the yard who in their right mind would do that if they checked in You'd be found out quick and you'd, and it's, it's all bad. And I, it was, it was as if it was, it, it, it my fate, my fate, my fate was already sealed anyway. It didn't matter. It didn't matter at that point. And when I got in the cell and the rep started lecturing me and, you know, th these aren't the smartest guys in the world. There's a lot of smart guys in prison. There's a lot of talented guys. These guys at Victorville, uh, in 2018 were the lamest no, they're nobodies dudes that like shot basalts in fucking idaho you know they'd show me their girlfriends they look like fucking samoan serial killers that play hockey you know you're like yeah that's a chick hey dog that's the mother of my child fool kind of disrespectful low-key fool Man, that's some that's this outsider but the same i mean I'll hold my tongue. Anyway. I'm in there. I'm tying my boot. These guys come in. Small cell to begin with, like I said. I don't know. Typically, a cell is 8x10. This was a handicap cell, so it was a little bigger. 15 by 12 or so. I don't even know. I suck it at parameters or whatever. I'm tying my boot, so I'm in a bad position. Come in. Closed the door. I knew I was getting whacked. I was like, fuck. I'm going to get killed. I'm going to get stabbed at least. I knew that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get stabbed. You know, and, and that's it. I mean, it was, it's not like you're in some 80s movie where you're going to get raped. But come on, bro. Pants off. Let's just get out of the way. Oh, you got me. It's not like that. It's not even, like, not even allowed. I'm tying my boot. This dude's like, oh, what happened? This guy that I've been good to, he comes up and he just kicks me as hard as he can in the face. Bam! Now, my head gets thrusted onto the metallic bunk and I caught a corner. I don't know if you can see the scar. It's uh, on my left eyebrow. Can you see it? Like in the middle of my eyebrow, you can. I got like eight stitches right there. It just split my, I mean... I hit it, it like the doctor was like, man, you got close. If it was just look at look at that scar and just imagine if I if I had hit that corner directly, I would have been I would have been blinded. Could you imagine me as like some blind dope fiend? That'd be so fucking classic. That'd be just ridiculous. Smoking crack blind. So, like, oh, hallelujah. You know, like doing shit like that. I swear I'd be like that. I feel really bad for blind people. That's terror. That's a horrible affliction. I'm not trying to make humor of it. I feel bad for doing it. But I'm four minutes into the video. I'm not going to start over. So sorry if you're blind. Okay. So anyway, um, as I hit the bunk, you know, I've gotten a lot of bad injuries in my life. You know, I've gotten beat up. I've got my ass. I'm not above it. I've gotten beat up quite a few times. This time in particular I was like eh. I kind of just was like I'm gonna get stabbed there's really nothing I could do because there were so many of them in a small area 
and there was this bunk, which in like a metallic um, toilet, which basically makes a death trap. So I hit my, I hit my face against this bunk bed and it just splits my shit right above my nose. Like I can feel that serious damage happen because my eyes are stinging from the blood. You know, there's like so much blood in my face. And I remember you could just feel the warmth, you know, it felt like somebody like got like a bucket of warm water and just like, you know, dumped it on you, but it was a little thicker and you could feel, you know, it, it almost feels like warm paint, you know, going down your face. It has that kind of consistency. And I kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm getting kicked a bunch. I'm curling up and I'm, I can't even, I can't even fight back. You don't realize like the position I'm in. I was crouching over. So as I'm tying my shoes and he kicked me, I hit the bunk. There's no, I can't get up. I mean, it's like, I'm pretty much pinned. You know, they definitely in a position where they could kill me. And I remember thinking that I was sorry to Nico that I made such a stupid decision to go back to the yard on some ego shit. You know, I didn't want... I didn't want, like, you know, I, I still had the delusions that I was going to go viral. I was going to be some famous guy at some point. And I don't want people saying that I was a piece of shit when I wasn't. When I, I mean, dude, we're like at the last six weeks of literally like a decade of Fed time. You know, I, I went in, I got busted in 08. We're in 2018. Six weeks until I kill my fucking pay, my number. Well, you never kill your number, but, you know, I'd be off um, supervision. Yeah, like, if I ever got busted by the feds again, I'd have the same number. And I remember just thinking that I was sorry to Nico that my ego got in the way of being a dad. And I remember promising to myself, if I do survive, I remember just, th I swear, anyone that's really gotten, like, beat up or been, like, in, like, a high traumatic situation like that knows that you, like, you're like, you don't think of stuff when you're getting beat up. You actually do. You know, you, you actually think of quite a bit. And I remember thinking, and I'm getting kicked a bunch. You know, I'm sitting there, I'm looking, and there's just blood everywhere. And I knew that I was fucked up. I wasn't crying or anything. I think I just kind of like, was like, okay, I'm going to curl up in a ball. I'm like a bitch. And I mean, it's all I could do. I was getting, I was getting kicked a lot. And remember, I still had the rib injury, kind of, you know, it was like it had healed, but certainly didn't feel good. I was getting kicked and I, you, you fucking, uh, I befriended you piece of shit. You fucking checking over money. You fucking piece of shit. And I remember thinking in my head, I was like, okay, I promise, I promise. If I ever, if I get out of this alive, I will never put my child second, you know, to prison shit. Who gives a fuck, dude? This is ridiculous. And I just took it, you know, I took the beating. Then I got up and I got like, you know, they like kind of moved away because that's that's how bitch these dudes are. First of all, they fought me in a pack. Nobody's going, you know, nobody wanted to just go toe to toe with me. I'm not saying I would have won, but fuck, man. You know, it would have been a lot more fair than to dope feed me while I'm crouched down when the big homie had given an order for me to get a one-on-one. -on -one. And... Um, you know, basically, uh, like they, you know, they, they dispersed because they were scared. They didn't want to get caught. So they leave. There's like a big mirror in the cell. And I remember looking at myself and I looked like an alien. I mean, they fucked me up. I, I got, um, I lost a tooth and like, I felt something in my mouth. There was a lot of blood, like sodium in my mouth. And I went like that and the tooth came out. It's just like in a movie. I was like, fuck. Right here was just completely open. You can see where the scar is. You know, like right there had just, get, you know, been completely just gashed open. I was leaking so bad, right? And this dude came in. He was kind of like a slower guy, right? Just a really weird, like, I remember I was watching TV with him one day. He's like, what? he's kind of slow, right? And he was like, nobody really made fun of him. They just kind of felt bad for him because he was just so, you know. I remember one time we were like watching TV like a couple weeks before this happened and they had an advertisement for Sherlock Gnomes. And boy, Johnny Depp's in that. But it hadn't come out yet and they were showing it on the 
TV as like an advertisement for it. I mean, I don't know if it was the second one. I don't know what the fuck it was, but they showed that. I remember he, he you know, because you got to wear headphones to watch TV. He takes his headphones off and he looks at me and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Sherlock gnomes. Do you, you get it? <laughs> Instead of homes, but it's, but they're gnomes and <sighs> super funny. <laughs> I'm like, are you all right, dude? He's like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Funny stuff makes me emotional, kind of. I was like, wow, man. I felt bad for him. So after these guys beat me up, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, and I'm just, I spit out a tooth, you know? I'm looking at my, my, my shit is just completely open, plus I'm lumped up, plus they've kicked me so many times in the stomach, I'd like lost my breath, but like the adrenaline of it had kind of eclipsed that. I don't know if anyone has ever experienced that, but like when you're getting, I've been jumped a few times. When you're getting jumped like that, um, you, like your adrenaline distracts you from the pain. And if you lose, like I got the wind knocked out of me, but because of the adrenaline, I didn't even like know what was going on. I didn't realize I was gasping for air. So as the adrenaline starts kind of like dissipating, you're, you're, you're just like, <gasps> you know, you start kind of like trying to get your air back because now you're noticing that it was temporarily taken like that. And I remember this, this slow Sherlock Gnomes guy, he looked at me and he goes, you're a real piece of shit. You know that? I was like, are you serious, dude? The fuck? I'm a piece of shit because I went to the hole got the big homie to get me out of the hole, was willing to fucking go heads up with one of you fucking lames, and I'm still a piece of shit? I didn't have to fucking leave. I wanted to prove that I didn't check in. Total misunderstanding, you know? Like, at Lompoc, it wasn't even like that. Like, there, I don't think anyone interpreted it that way, you know? It, like, it was, like, pretty obvious what happened. Here it was questionable, and like, again, looking at it from an outside perspective, I would probably, I, I'd probably be like, yep, yeah, let's smash that dude, you know? Because I'm one of those stupid prison guys, you know, that I was just talking shit about, you know? Oh, Sherlock Gnome's funny, funny stuff. So Mike, like, he, or Mike, is the guy's name, so Mike is like, um, It's like, well, I was supposed to be on that squad, right? He, he talked like, he had like this teeth thing. He's like, I was supposed to be on that squad, right? Have you ever seen Doofus from Scary Movie? He was like that. He's like, I was supposed to be on that squad to fuck you up. Now I'm on soup duty. I was like, what does that mean? He's like, I have to bring you soups because you're not allowed to go to the kitchen anymore. Okay, and so the, the rep, he had left, everybody left, right, because there's cameras on the range. These guys fucked me up. I don't know how they expect to conceal this. I mean, I did get beat up the first time that I was in, at Victorville pretty bad, just on a one-on-one -on -one fight, and uh, we got it sewed up, you know? Somebody just sewed that shit with, so with, with sewing string and a needle. Sewing needle and string. Sewing string. Anyway. Uh, it's like string from a blanket. Um, you know, Mike was like, he's like, yeah, I, I, was, I was supposed to be on the squad. Now I'm just going to feed you soup. So I was like, whatever. Rep comes back in and he's like, you could just tell he was just so stoked that like I got beat up. He didn't like, he never liked me. Oh, he didn't like me because he was some old loser and nobody nobody you know i have a girl that's riding it out with me i'm on the phone with her all the time i'm like giggling i'm like i love you baby and she's like i love you too and like these guys will just be like Ugh, fuck that guy and then like i was going home soon you know i mean i still had to go do my state time but like to them all these dudes were doing like a life 30 years like none of them were going home so they just hated on me 
And, uh, and they shouldn't. I was probably one of the most, like right before I went to prison, I was starting a nonprofit to help people like that. And I, it really changed my mind about that to a large degree. I still think there should be prison reform, but I'm kind of like, damn, I don't even know if I want it. A lot of the dudes in there are just straight scumbags. You know, certain people deserve to be in prison. All of these guys, by the way, all of these guys that I'm talking about, all had violent charges, like all like piece of shit stuff, armed robberies, home evasions, um, you know, high speed chases that go like past state lines, just, you know, dirtbag shit, you know, um, like where you're like really hurting another person. It's not, it's like not victimless, you know, um, so that was the plan. So the reps telling me that that's the plan. And he's all happy. He's like, so the plan is we're going to nurture you back to health. You, mm. You're you're simply to eat soups. You're going to pay your debts. And then you're going to go home. I was like, okay. Yeah. Cool, man. Hey, thanks for being a good rep. He's like, no problem, man. Fucking asshole. So he leaves. Paisa comes in there. Right, some pice that I've been getting some boxing off of. He just blesses me with the half a strip. He's like, hey, you're full. Like, you just got beat up. I got you. He's like, all right. Fucking mix it up, put it down my nose. At least I had that, you know? So I'm sitting there in the cell and they call, they call lunch, you know? Everybody leaves. So I'm by myself, you know? And don't check in while we're gone. I'm like, I just came back. Okay. You know, I already come back. And I was like, you know, fuck it. I mean, this is whatever. You know, I probably should have stayed in the hole, but it was important to me not to leave with like fucked up like that, you know, not to leave owing money or, or, or people thinking that, that I went out like a bitch, right? So I'm in there. I'm, you know, eating my soup the cop starts walking now i know if the cop sees me he's gonna he's gonna lock me up and believe me i did not want to be locked up after enduring that beating the last thing i wanted to do was have it be for nothing <laughs> you know i wanted to talk to my girl you know i wanted to to be able to pay my debts i did think about the fact that if that's what my friends in the unit are doing to me what, you know, what are the guys, um, on the yard going to do to me? You know, there's a good chance I was going to get stabbed and I was grateful that I didn't. At first I thought I might've, because I was like really in a lot of pain and I couldn't tell, you know, like what kind of, um, oh shit, I fucked my hand up. I can't even light it. Um, I couldn't tell what kind of injuries I had, but after like the adrenaline wore off, I, I realized they just stomped me out. I was like, okay, well, they probably want me to pay my debts. If I got stabbed with, you know, I was definitely gonna get taken off the yard. So the cop walks, he looks in and, um, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like standing in the middle of the cell, looking out the window and I'm holding a book thinking that maybe I don't look suspicious. It works. He keeps going. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm just like, you know, I'm sitting there, sitting there. I look back in the mirror and, and I start washing my face off. Putting soap on there. It's stinging. Like my shit's all leaking. I cannot stop bleeding either. I'm like putting, I remember I put a white t-shirt up to like where my eyebrows are and it just filled it up with blood. Like within like a few minutes, you know, it was like, I was really gushing blood, like completely soaked. Standing there in front of the mirror, I do not even hear him. He comes back. He's like, hey man, what are you doing? Now I'm standing there, <laughs> I have a bloody t-shirt to my face, right? I don't look at him. And I'm like, nothing, I'm just washing my face. He's like, why is why is the t-shirt bloody? I'm like shaving. He's like, dude, the whole shirt's bloody. I was like, I'm good, man. He's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. So that's the set. So the second time he noticed that I'd been beat up, right? He didn't do anything. He just left. I was like, all right. All the guys are at lunch. Now they had left a white guy 
to make sure that I didn't check in, the white guy was sitting, he was like guarding me. I felt like I was in some fucked up action movie or something. He was like sitting pretty much outside of my door. There was like a TV, it was the Southsiders TV. He was sitting in that area, he's watching TV. He, you know, he asked them if, hey, we need to like watch the cell, make sure this dude doesn't go, go up top right now. Just ridiculous, man. I was always super solid. Like, I don't know why they were treating me like that. Especially the fact that I came back. It was so, it's just, you know, whatever. But I go and I start making my bed. I can't stop leaking. Like I'm making the, the bed and just droplets of blood are going all over the place. Then I hear a bunch of keys coming. Lieutenant, Sergeant, Cat, like all of the top fucking wigs we're at chow it's called mainline that's where like all the prison staff becomes available for you to talk to them at the kitchen and i guess this guy had, had called in and been like hey there's this inmate here and he's like leaking real bad and he's saying he's just shaving and it's so suspicious so they come in at this point i can't do anything i can't hide it because i take the shirt off trying to talk to them and blood's just like pouring out of me L gushing dude like when you like sometimes when you get nicked right up like in that area like right where the eyebrows are it just will not stop bleeding for anyone that's gotten beat up before captain's like he's like we already knew this was gonna happen dude we told you not to go back i said why would I not be able to go back, dude? I said, I didn't even, nothing happened, you know? Like, you're just making assumptions. Without me saying that anything happened, nothing happened, you know? Because they did have cameras on the range, but they didn't have cameras in the cell. So they didn't actually see the incident per se. All they know is that I was leaving the hole. They had information that I was probably going to get whacked. They let me go anyway because, you know, the big homie had juice and he basically pulled strings. <clears throat> so they were like anticipating it is what I think. I think that's why the dude came and checked. I mean, it was kind of suspicious that almost every single fucking person was at lunch except for this white dude sitting in the south side or section like guarding me. I mean, it's how dumb these guys are. It looks so fucking obvious that they were trying to conceal something. They're like, put your hands behind your back, man. I'm like, I was like, look, man, I got like literally like a month left. You can't let me go out like that, man. Like, let me just stay. I'm telling you nothing happened. They're like, we can't do that, dude. You're fucking, you at least got to go to medical. I'm like, fuck. Put my hands behind my back cuff me dude they walk me across the compound i'm li like so all the guys are like getting out of lunch the whole prison they see me handcuffed bloody walking with five cops the white guy saw the whole thing right so he knew that I didn't, that I didn't do that. He heard the conversation the first time. He heard me deny that anything happened. He knew that I denied it the second time. So they knew that I didn't check in. I knew I was fucked. I already was getting an incident report for trying to like head ram the black dude, which I personally think the cops were doing that just to fuck, you know, just to try to fuck me over because I, I truly believe that that's what it was. It wasn't even the the investigation thing. It was the big homie seeing this black dude coming into my cell and thinking that that looked weird, which it did. The cops claim that they made a mistake, but I don't think so. You know, I don't really believe in coincidences like that. I think they were trying to fuck with me. Why? I don't know. Maybe because I, I you know, I don't know. I come across as arrogant or whatever. Sometimes cops don't like me. Sometimes inmates don't like me for that reason. So they, they, they take me across the yard. 
everybody from the chow hall is outside and they're just looking at me wide-eyed. Not only are all these cops escorting me, but I'm leaking like bad. I mean, my whole face is just gut is covered in blood, man. I look, I look like I got beat worse than I did. I did get beat pretty bad. I didn't get any broken bones or anything, but I had to get eight stitches and it was like up like in my unibrow area and it just like was, it was the robbing, you know, I like hit the, I, I caught a corner of the metallic bone. So they take me to medical. I'm cuffed the whole time. And the doctor comes and he looks at me. And he's like, what happened? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I took a nap and I woke up and I'm bleeding. I don't know. I think it might be because I'm a bitch. I bleed once a month like this out of my unibrow. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, We've seen it before. So he tells the, like now, so the, the like the, the upper staff kind of like left me. You know, they, they just kind of like let me be. And I was with one CO and I was with this doctor and the doctor's like, I'm probably going to have to go stitch that area. He's like, it's going to be really painful though. He's like, we're going to have to cuff you to the table. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, why? He's like, cause you're going to try to hit us. Cause it's going to be so painful. Oh, man, that's not really like the bedside manner that I'm sure you were taught in med school, man. They end up cuffing me like this. I'm like crucified to this table. He goes in and they didn't put anything to numb it or anything. He just goes in and starts sewing my unibrow back together. Like skin flapping, all that. I have no idea what's going to happen to me. It was super painful. I just cared about like, I wasn't even thinking about the physical pain. I was just thinking about the situation I was in to begin with, you know, just a fucked up situation again. Like now that, those were, that's two bad situations that I got in, um, you know, like in the course of, I've probably been busted like eight months, seven months at this point. Like, I mean, well, and then there's like the riot at San Bernardino. It was like, I'd already been through so fucking much. But this one really didn't sit well with me. I didn't deserve that shit at all. Like, I didn't do anything wrong. Nothing wrong. Even the second time when they came and asked me, I denied, denied, denied. They were basically telling me that if I admitted that I was beat up, they'd put me in the hole basically as a check-in. And I'd get a monthly phone call. And they said, we'll give you two phone calls call your kid's mom twice and you can have your radio i was like no nah, man i was like i can't go out like that i should i should have because it didn't matter these fuckers smashed me out anyway so they end up taking me back to the hole you know and i'm uh this time i'm <laughs> they write me up for fight for getting beat up because i won't admit to what happened so this is my second fighting incident report i have all this paperwork by the way for anybody that's like this is all bullshit you know it's no it's exactly what happened and they end up taking me the whole so now I'm, i got like another thing where it's like like i'm pretty much in trouble for getting beat up you know and um what ends up happening is they put me with a uh, south cider they sell me up with the south cider which you're allowed to do you can sell up with south ciders in the hole when you're in when you're in the feds and he had, uh, he had gotten in a fight that day, just a mutual, like one-on-one -on -one with another South Sider. He was doing like 30 days. His name was Travioso, Travioso, which is like trouble in Spanish. I forget where he was from, but you know, like he, we started talking, you know, we we're both in the hole. He was pretty beat up too, but he, like, he, like I said, his shit was just one-on-one. -on -one. And he's like, hey, you active? I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm active, but, you know, let me explain what's going on. So I explained to him the situation. I tell him the whole thing. I'm like, so, I, you know, I, I get hemmed up for an investigation. They bring me back here. Black dude go, tries to go in my cell while I'm talking to, like, my big white homie. You know, and they do not like black people, right? And, and just seeing that a black guy would go in my cell would suggest that I was no good anyway, Right. Even though I, I hadn't checked in, 
I never did check in in the feds, you know, but that's just what these fucking idiots, I guess, thought because, you know, like this kind of like how the cards were, were laid out, you know? So I'm explaining this to this guy and he tells me that, that I was, amb that that was a setup, you know, that what had happened is the big homie had set me up. He had me walk into an ambush. I was never supposed to catch a one-on-one. -on -one. He thought that I was fucked up. He thought the cops were trying to, to um, you know, to to basically cover for me. You know, fake lockup orders, all that. Which makes no sense. There's no reason why they would do that. But what he was telling me was that I wasn't even supposed to get smashed. Because he got in a fight after I got in a fight. This is like hours later. Just to, like, not to confuse the, like, the chronology of it. Like, this is, like, hours after my incident is when I sold up with him. What, what I, what I, what I was told is that I was supposed to get taken out. I was supposed to get stabbed on the yard. They weren't supposed to smash me out like that in the cell. And those guys just fucked up because they're so dumb. They like, you know, everybody in prison wants to prove how tough they are. So they, you know, people just will like, you know, jump at the opportunity. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, knock him out. I'll suck his dick, you know, stuff like that. Fucking weirdos. And um, the fact that they smashed me out like that, they fucked up. Now they were, now all those guys, that's the irony. They were in trouble because they fucked up because their orders were to take me out. This dude set me up. I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And it wasn't the end of, this is not the end of that story either. This is just setting up for what's going to happen. They set me up, did me dirty as fuck. That's the second time I was done dirty like that. And we'll get into it in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't checked out Patreon and you like my content, check it out. That's how I survive. That's how I pay my bills. And I try to make it worth people on Patreon's while, you know, um, make it worth your while. Yeah. Um, extra content, extra storylines, raw footage for my documentary. Check it out. Lowest tier is $3 a month. It's 10 cents a day. It's, you can do that. I believe in you. Appreciate you all. Thank you for supporting me. Palabra.